Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's third video, day 10. will take us to the 14th of February to Valentine's Day. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that, it says GFS and ECM Ensembles, because they run around a couple of weeks. So we're going to have a look at CFS V2 for March. At the end of the video, I should get on that for you in a moment. Just first video series, our 6 cm upload. And we, if that wasn't enough, we've also uh, released the uh, Jamie Friday uh, for this week as well. So check out those two vids if you'd like to. But I'll tell you coming up over the weekend, at, uh, or tomorrow anyway, at the end of uh, the video. Right, so you're going to begin in the stratosphere today. Just bring it up with what's going on in the strat. So uh, this is how temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole, set against uh, the average. This is from uh, the JMA. So we currently still have a colder than uh, normal stratospheric temperature uh, at 10 HPA. So uh, a few days ago, we did pop up close to average around minus, uh, around minus um, 55, something like that. But uh, right now, we're just here. We're around minus 60, which is below average by the beginning of February. That's where the grey line is. So, um, Oh yeah, cold stratospheric temperature continue, albeit not dramatically so, was uh, colder than that um, sort of uh, early running the season, but still rather cold on average with the temperature at 10 HPA, going a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, there the very, very, very cold stratospheric temperature continues, look at this, uh, so still the temperature at 10 HPA is under minus 80 bear in mind in february the temperature should be uh 30 hpa somewhere close to around minus 65 so we are well below we're nearly like 20 degrees i think about minus 85 now we're really uh, we're nearly 20 degrees below average uh at 30 hpa which is closer to the troposphere Absolutely incredible how cold the temperature has been at the HPA through the season. You can see right way from like the middle of December onwards, we generally had a very cold stratospheric temperature at the HPA. And uh, this course all associated with a strengthening of the polar vortex. It's one of the reasons that Western Europe is having a generally mild winter. It's not the only reason. One of the reasons Western Europe is having a generally milder winter is that the um, we've had cold temperatures in the stratosphere and that kind of dries the uh, zonal winds and the zonal winds then drive and power up the uh, polar vortex. What we've been waiting for, what we was expecting we get, but we haven't had it yet, um, but we was expecting we would get one uh, this season. Um, what we're waiting for is a sudden stratospheric warming. So uh, this is how the temperature currently looks. Um, you know, over North Pole, we've got these blue colours at 10 HPA. These are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere. So it has been a very modest minor warming over Siberia uh, over the past few days, but, you know, nowhere near the North Pole and nowhere near enough to affect the polar vortex at any rate. At any rate. So uh, we run through and uh, we keep these blue colours going, circulating around the... Uh, this is a GFS, by the way, it measures here. We keep the uh, blue colours of cold temperatures at 10 HPA sort of circulating around the uh, North Pole temperatures again hovering somewhere around minus 70, minus 75, something uh, like that. No particular warming of the stratosphere over the next week as we go into extended range. Is there any sign of any notable warming? I mean, at some point, climatology has got to kick in, you will think, and uh, we'll have to start lifting the temperature up just for the fact that we're getting uh, towards the end of the winter. But we do start seeing very late on a little bit of a warming beginning to occur. That's nowhere near a sun traffic warming. It won't be enough to affect polar vortex at its roots. You know, um, but just a little bit of a weakening, I suppose, of those blue colours right at the end of the GFS run. But that's like 20th of February. And even then, the polar vortex is still well and truly in business. We've still got those cold temperatures, those blue colours are still anchored and rooted at 10 HPA. So, uh, so yeah, for the time being, you know, for the time being, these cold temperatures continue. That means that the polar vortex will continue to be strong. And, uh, and it's all a signal, really, uh, for a continuation of the uh, mild winter of 2021-2022 uh, to go on. Uh, Central temperature currently looks like this. It's standing at 9 degrees, 9.0. That's 4.6 degrees above average provisional to the 3rd of February. So uh, I think we're looking at, a, even though we're only like three days in, I think we're looking at a, a significantly mild and average month to round off this uh, mild and virtually snowless winter. Though I note that a few snowflakes have fallen across some parts of the country today, and a little bit more notably so up in the north. Um, but for a lot of places, it will be a snowless winter, I think this, and, uh, and that 
goes on. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks are at Cardiff today. So red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Cardiff. We're starting off below average at the moment. The upper air temperatures will gradually inch their way up as we go into uh, next week. So it is going to become warmer for a while next week. Maybe a little colder snap again later next week. And then as we get into the middle and second half of February, just looking generally mild, uh, really. Precipitation-wise, getting a bit more unsettled, though. So, of course, we have a very dry weather in January, but it does look more unsettled as we go through February. Starting off with uh, some wet weather over the next uh, day or two, then a drier interlude early next week as we get this lift up in the temperature. And then after that, more unsettled through the middle and second half of the month. Could actually turn quite wet there through the third week of February, but bear in mind, that is a really long way out. Two metre temperatures are looking like this. So we're not doing anything all that uh, exciting. Starting off a bit chilly at the moment. Um, rather up and down. But oh, next week it will get quite a lot milder. Maybe a bit of a colder snap um, later next week. And then generally the trend is mild really as we go into uh, the middle and second half of the month. As snow is concerned, not much doing there in Cardiff. Looks pretty... <laughs> Pretty grim, uh, doesn't it? Pretty grim times uh, for snow in Cardiff, as it is in many areas. Temperature anomaly, Sean Mee 4 to the top of Bedbury, a bit cold now to start from double-wise mild and average in most areas. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to the top of February, rather on the drive and average side of the far south and southwest, wetter than average though for more northern and western areas. The latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net shows it's a little bit colder today as we are pulling in the wind from more of a northwesterly direction. So just a little bit cold today. However, milder air is waiting in the wings and uh, those milder westerlies will be heading in through the course of the weekend. Right, so this is how UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Monday. A little transient ridge then. Uh, then we go through Tuesday with high pressure over France, low pressure around Iceland. Green, that's a very mild pattern through the early part of next week. Later next week, we begin to pull the high pressure out to west a little bit. Start to get some slightly cooler air coming in from the northwest. It's not particularly cold, but some slightly cooler air coming in late next week from the northwest. Might deliver some wintry showers to the north. Icon looks like that. Again, very mild through the early part of next week. With high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Then later next week, the high pressure pulls out into the Atlantic. We turn wind into the north. We do get a little bit more of a northerly, actually, with Icon compared to the UK map. So um, that's a little bit colder through the second half next week. Nothing to get excited about. It only last a day or two and then we'll be back into my other westies. But that does turn a little bit colder later next week. Very brief cooler interlude then. Some wintry showers before the Maya westies return. This is how the uh, GFS midnight run is looking. <coughs> I'm so sorry, sorry everybody. Again, much and much this early next week. Very mild. With high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. Then the high pressure sort of pulls out to our west, turns a little bit cooler from the northwest through the second half of next week, a cooler interlude. Then very wet and windy over the weekend up the 12th and 13th of February with this deep area of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, about bringing on wind and rain. Uh, that's the 14th, but, uh, day 10, Valentine's Day, the, high, the low pressure, I should say, sitting right over top of the country. And it stays unsettled with the GFS midnight run right way through into the end of it, which gets to 20th February, more low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic. So that's a rather wetter um, scenario compared to some of the model output, you know, that we've seen lately. Um, and would suggest that February might be coming out as a rather wettish sort of month. Uh, we did have a discrepancy, discrepancy in JMA Friday, remember, with the JMA looking generally dry through the uh, rest of February and CFS looking rather wet through the rest of February. So there is a bit of uncertainty about how unsettled this February will get. Uh, GFS 6Z looks like that. So once more, we're looking very, very mild early next week. Taste of spring, then a little bit cooler with winds in from the northwest through the second half of next week. That's this rich builds in that might deliver some overnight frost, which wouldn't normally be all that notable, but this winter, you know, um, it is a bit of a talking point. Uh, day 10, we're going back into those milder west southwesterlies again, especially so in the north. And then in the more extended range, staying mild and westerly, not as unsettled though with the 6 Z. Uh, always with this influence from the Azores High to the south, bringing quite a bit of dry weather there, rather more unsettled further northwards. So, um, so yeah, you know, it's uh, it remains to be seen how unsettled it's going to get. That is the big unknown, I think, about this February. Will it, will it turn out to be quite a wettish month, or will that Azores High continue, particularly for the south, to bring a lot of dry weather? 
Moving on to the G. Yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed the video, please can you smash the like button. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's know what you think missing all of our videos. Thank you so much. Right, so GM, again, looks very flat and westerly through the early part of next week. Really mild as well. Later next week, that high pressure pulls out to the Atlantic. We bring some colder air in from uh, the northwest as we start to go you know, to second half next week, but only briefly. And then we're back into those milder west southwest is yet again by day 10 which is the 14th of feb mile for valentine's uh this has been a long while since we've had a valentine's day blizzard hasn't it um 79 did that uh had a valentine's day blizzard but it's been a while uh, right, I'm so sorry about it. I'm on a tangent. Right, um, EC, if you remember the Valentine's Day bit blizzard and freeze-up of, uh, 1979, uh, let me know in the comments. There are some of you that will remember that, I'm sure. Right, ECM, it looks like that again, flat as a pancake on, uh, Tuesday, really mild then. And then early next week, some slightly cooler air coming in from the northwest. Again, not getting that high pressure quite as far north as, like, Icon does. So it's more of a west-northwest as opposed to a northerly. Uh, but a little bit cooler from the second half of next week. And the high pressure ridging in, bringing a return to lots of dry weather. Probably frost and fog by night, but pleasantly mild by day. Uh, and then day 10, 14th of Feb, looks like that. Mainly dry again for England where it's just a little bit more unsettled though. For Scotland, this is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run. Some flakes of snow um, in the south, and that has been uh, that has occurred. You know, we have had on this cold front some flakes of snow across more southern areas. That's all out of the way now. We've got these winter showers packing into the north and the west. Um, over weekend, turning quite unsettled with wet weather for England and Wales. Colder for Scotland, though, with risk of some wintry conditions up there. And then, as we head on into next week, we're trending to reasonably dry weather away from the northwest, anyway, where there will be some showery outbreaks of rain. And um, that really carries on up to day 10. This is the option on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the 14th of February. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure ridging in through the country, bringing a lot of dry weather. Low pressure is up to the north as a projection. So on the mild side of the projection, of course, that could deliver frost and fog at night and in the morning. But with the sun getting ever stronger through February, probably pleasantly mild by day. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And it will get us to the 19th of February. 14 members of the ECM Ensemble still have that high pressure over. It's like to the south of the country. Lots of dry weather in with that low pressure away to the northwest. 13, much more unsettled. Low pressure breaks through. Turns us wet and uh, unsettled. Uh, another 13 with low pressure away to the northwest. High pressure to the south, southeast, and up comes those southwesterly winds. And then 11 have high pressure over, just slightly east of the coach, more towards Scandinavia, perhaps bringing in the wind from like an east southeast direction. I don't think it'll be particularly cold, but it, that probably is the coolest scenario in terms of frost and fog, anyway. But by day, probably pleasant with uh, some uh, early spring sunshine or late winter sunshine. Uh, finally, CFS V2 for March. This is how we're looking. On and on it goes. Uh, no change from the pattern, really. That's set up in August, in March. Um, so this is over six months' worth of the same pattern. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, with high pressure still ridging in to west of Europe from the Atlantic and over into, like, continent as well. Low pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland. Jet streams up here. So March. If anybody's thinking that winter will be unleashed in March, as it sometimes can be after a mild winter, but... If this is right, this is one of, going to be one of those years where that happens, because that is uh, going to be a very, very spring-like, probably quite a warm March. Look at the temperature anomaly. Wow. In the red colours there, that's like two to three degrees above average. So um, CFS is predicting a very, very mild, if not warm, March, as it is through most parts of Northern Europe. And, uh, you know, most parts of Europe, Northern Europe will be really warm as well in March. So it's a proper early spring for March. A um, little bit unsettled away to our northwest again. So a little bit wetter up there. Drier to our south and southwest. It's basically a continuation of the pattern that we've been in since August. And it's still in business in March. Over six months worth of the same. That'd be like month seven of the same continuous pattern. Extraordinary. Of course, it's only like one run from the CFS. It could look very different 
um, in a few days. But that is how March is looking today. Will we ever get a change to this pattern? Is it ever going to change? I wonder. Let me know in the comments. Right, we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, please can smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know what you about this and all of our videos. And thank you so much, everybody. Um, right, so just to tell you what's coming up tomorrow. So I'm uh, going to start off with the 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the ECM WS 6 week look ahead. We go for Garzy back to our and a 10 to 14 day at 2. On Sunday, we're going to have. Um, what we've got coming up on Sunday is Sunday Roundup. So we're once a month with Sunday Roundup. First uh, Sundays of the month. Um, so yeah, got Sunday Roundup coming up for you uh, on Sunday as well as 6 a.m. Uh, upload and whatnot. No live streams this weekend. Mrs. P is still in hospital. She is improving. Thank you so much, everybody, for all of your lovely, lovely messages of concern and support over the past several days. And, uh, yeah, she's gradually improving. It's a slow approach because she really has been very, very, very poorly. Um, so, but, uh, but she is getting better. But as she's in hospital, I don't want to be live streaming and, you know, be out of contact for like an hour in case uh, in case she needs to call or you know what not so so i want to uh no live streams um except there'll probably be a channel member for live stream uh that uh, uh you know i'll do channel members um on uh saturday at five o'clock but otherwise to the friday night stream and, and sunday night stream uh again cancelled this week when she is home and uh better um you know or settled in anyway uh then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back to our live streaming schedule but uh, for today's videos, anyway, you enjoy the rest of your Friday. And for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.